all good to go? All right. Go Purdue. Go UConn. All right. Not that I really care about basketball at all. Um, all right, yes, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Um, I just want to give um, a disclaimer when you see the title for this, in case you're visiting, that no, you did just not come to a church that worships Satan. So you're going to see your title here. Okay, we are not a satanic church. We're actually just going to expose satanic philosophy, so we're very much going to be using the Bible and talking about Jesus. And I'm actually hearing from uh, uh, Jesus' half-brother, James. We're going to be spending time in the book of James, if you want to go there. But, um, you know, there's sometimes where I'm looking in the Bible, and I thought I was going to teach on faith this week, and then um, there's sometimes where I'm looking for verses to... To, you know, to, to be able to put up on the screen to show that what I'm saying is actually all biblical and that kind of stuff. But there's many times when I'm doing that, that I'm on this path and it just doesn't, I don't know how to describe it. It doesn't feel like the flow. Some of you know what I mean when you're like just flowing in the Holy Spirit and that kind of stuff. But then you're just like, I, it just doesn't feel like the flow. So you just feel like that maybe that door's been closed or you're not supposed to go that way. Um, I haven't experienced the restraint yet. The, you know, the Bible talks about that Paul and his entourage were getting ready to head over to a certain area of Asia, and it literally says in the Bible that the Holy Spirit restrained them or kept them from going. So it's not that extreme, but many times when I'm looking for things, I want to teach what the Lord wants me to teach. And what sometimes I think I want to teach or I need to teach is not what he knows that you need to hear. Amen. Okay, so once I started going on this, then the Lord just started throwing all these things at me. So we are actually going to talk about satanic philosophy today. I think, I know that this is important because if you look around, how many of you know that this country is polarized? There never seems like a middle of the road anymore. You're either over here or you're over here and we can't get along and have these conversations. And I'm not talking necessarily in Christendom, but I'm talking about the world in general. And uh, there's a lot of political things going on. And this is part of the reason that I'm believing why the Holy Spirit wanted me to teach this is because a lot of the things that we believe are political issues are actually either issues that involve demonic activity or satanic activity and things like that. But if we call them political issues, then it's not really like, well, this is right or this is wrong. It's just, this is my viewpoint. And how many of you know that once you became a Christian, your opinion about the way that God does things or anything else doesn't matter? God speaks and we obey. And so if the Bible... I always say that the Bible is one of the, the greatest tools to get us to repent about the way that we think. So many times we might be operating in some kind of uh, satanic philosophy and didn't even know it until it's exposed. And, and we may be going through some of these things because there's actually a list towards the end of my message. And if you're like, I didn't know that that was a satanic philosophy, it is. But we need to define it first, okay? Because there's, and again, I've said this before, I love this about God's universe. It's black and white. There's no gray area. It's either light or it's darkness. It's either a satanic philosophy or it's a God philosophy. And so I think the more important that we realize that there's not all of these little gray areas that, because I always feel like gray areas is where we get into trouble that we need to know what is a God philosophy and what is a satanic philosophy. So we need to define this idea of philosophy first. So let's go to the first slide. We're going to do a little bit of Greek here. So logos, by definition, get my water out here. Logos in the Greek, it's most commonly translated word. I think we kind of touched a little bit on this last week that, you know, in John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. That word is logos there. It's, it's most commonly translated word. But I want you to see something here. Logos in the Greek world would have been more precisely understood as reason or logic, or, or not just reason, but reasoning. Reason or logic. Because the word logikos in the Greek means reasonable, rational, and is derived from logos. 
And we talked about logigos, logigos I think last week when, when it says um, that therefore present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to him. This is your logikos worship, high priestly worship, meaning it's your logical or reasonable response to everything that Jesus has done. So don't just always think word when you see logos. Think that it's not just Jesus was the word, but Jesus is reason and he is logic. Now that don't, don't take Jesus and put him into logic. Think that you have to redefine what reason and logic is. If reason and logic does not go the way of what Jesus taught, then it's not reason and logic. This is one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to change what words mean in the world. With the easiest one to point to. And we have to constantly remind people of this because it's becoming so common in our culture that people forget about it. We change one of the biggest ungodly demonic things that we did is we changed the definition of marriage. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Period. Now, you know, when they were like, well, what, you know, what about civil unions? And I'm like, well, the world can act like the world all day long. Just don't call it marriage. Because now you're changing, the, literally changing the definition of a word. So the idea that, you know, a, a man can marry a man or a woman can marry a woman or, I, you know, I saw one, I think I've shared in here, where a woman married the ocean. Um, believe me, I know how people are about their pets. I'm sure there are people out there that married their dogs. There's never cat unions. A cat would never submit to that. Thank you for that one clap. Okay. So, so again, so we need to make sure that when we're talking about reason or logic, it could be the same thing. So in the beginning was the word, or you could say in the beginning was reason and logic. And later we see that, that the word became flesh. So reason and logic, God's type of reason and logic became flesh in Jesus Christ. And that's what he did when he preached and he taught. Again, we, we touched on this a little bit last week that, you know, if somebody slaps you across the face, the world's logic would say, punch them back. But Jesus' logic and reason was turn the other cheek. When someone wrongs you, you don't wrong them back, you forgive them. And, and, and people say, well, that's just so different. Actually, it's the order of the universe before human beings were even created. It's because the logic of this world has become so twisted. We think that the things that Jesus said were really radical when really that was the standard and over thousands of years, it got perverted. Amen? Okay, so that's the word logos. Whenever you see that in your Bible, if, if you ever look at the Greek words. Now, I did not know this because I know that there are many people walking around today named Sophia. But Sophia, if, if you know somebody or your name is Sophia, you may know this already or may not, your name means wisdom. So in the Greek, the word Sophia is translated wisdom. So anywhere where you see wisdom in your Bible is most likely that Greek word. But again, we need to understand what it meant in the Greek world, the Greek understanding at the time. So Sophia comes from the Greek word sophis, which means clear. Therefore, Sophia can also mean clarity. Like how many times have you been in a situation you're like, well, I, I, need, some, I need some more um, clarity on this situation. Can you make it more clear to me? And so Sophia means clear, or Sophia can mean clarity, and we get our English words sophistication and philosophy from Sophia. So what, like I said on the, on, the, on the title slide, when we're talking about satanic philosophy, we're talking about, and I know that this, this sounds like I'm puffing up Satan, but it's just, it's just the Greek word. We're talking about the wisdom of the enemy, the philosophy of the enemy. Because if Satan is antichrist, and I'm not talking about the antichrist, I'm just saying the, the spirit of antichrist, so to speak. It's anything that's antichrist or a pseudo-Christ, a false Christ. Then if there is a godly philosophy, then you better believe that there is a satanic philosophy. And so again, I wanted you to see these words because these words, um, particularly the word Sophia, is going to be in some of the scriptures that we're going to talk about today. Good so far? 
Okay, let's go on to, so we're going to define satanic philosophy here before we go into the scriptures. So satanic philosophy, summed up in one word, would either be self or self-interest. Hallel. Now, how many of you are here when we talked about the name Lucifer is not in your Bible? It may be in your English Bible, but that name, if you look at it in Hebrew's name is Hallel. And if you study anything about the angels, all of their names ended in L. Okay? So Hallel, meaning his name before Satan, Hallel's fall from heaven was due to his jealousy and ambition to be like God by saying in his heart, and this is in Isaiah 14, 14, I will make myself like the Most High. When Satan, that's his new name, formerly Hallel, came to Eve, he defamed God's character and influenced Eve to engage in her self interest, which was wanting to be like God in knowing good and evil. Remember, they were forbidden to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And, sa and Satan said to her, you're not going to die if you eat of that tree. God just doesn't want you to do that because you'll be like him. And that's what Satan said in his heart. He wanted to make myself like the most high. Adam did the same thing. Therefore, satanic demonic influence on the human race is simply the philosophy of self or self-interest. Now, this is important because most people think like satanic stuff that's going on is like these crazy people in these dark robes that wear upside down crosses and, you know, have seances and all of that kind of stuff. No, I'm not saying that that's good. It's definitely evil, but that is not normal what I would call normal Satanism in the world. That's easy to point to and say that it's evil. And how many of you know that Satan loves to trick people? It says that he can make himself like an angel of light. So Satan isn't going to be so bold as to say, I kind of have this club of Satan people and they're all really crazy looking and they act weird and they wear black robes and, you know, they do crazy things. I'm not saying that those people don't genuinely think that they're worshiping Satan, but the greatest way that you can worship the devil is put yourself or your self-interest ahead of everybody else. That is a satanic philosophy. And so if we look at it that way, then some of us may need to have some checks when we see the list later and going, oh my goodness, I didn't realize this. I might actually be engaged in satanic philosophy. Now again, that doesn't mean you're evil. That doesn't mean you're going to hell. It just means simply recognize it and then repent. Because how many of you don't want to be involved in satanic philosophy? Okay? It's important. And again, it's important to define it because you're going to see later many of the things, again, on this list are going to look like political issues. They're not political issues. They're satanic philosophies. Okay, so I'm sure these lists might offend at least one or two people in here. I don't know for sure, but, you know, don't get offended, right? The Bible says not to be offended. But if I don't share this with you, then I feel that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing because these are not ballot issues. They are satanic versus godly issues. Philosophies. Amen? Okay, so let's see some of this stuff in the Word now. Let's go to James chapter 3, starting at verse 13. These notes are in your app. Or um, open your physical Bibles, or you can, um, if you get your U version on your on your mobile device. Okay, James three thirteen in the Greek says this: Who among you is skilled, wise, experienced, and knowledgeable from gaining understanding? Now, this is specifically talking about. Skilled, wise, experienced, and knowledgeable from gaining understanding about the Lord, okay? In context, this is talking about our walk with the Lord. Look what he says. If so, so if all of this is true, demonstrate it through good behavior, which are your deeds in the humility and meekness of Sophia. Which again, that word, wisdom, can mean skill, wisdom, insight, clarity, and philosophy. So what this is saying is, and again, this goes back, um, or I, let me say it like this, this flies in the face of our culture. 
Because our culture is all about think tanks, right? Like you've got these lofty people that all the way around, they sit around and they're just paid to have these brilliant ideas. Or you've got, um, you know, people that teach at universities and, and they're, you know, they're writing journal articles and all of that. It's all about this great deep wisdom that I have and I'm so wise that I must share it with everybody. What James is writing on, under, the, um, under the leading of the Holy Spirit is he's saying, if you think you are skilled, wise, experienced, knowledgeable from gaining understanding, then it should manifest or you should demonstrate it through good behavior, which are your deeds in the humility and meekness of wisdom. So basically saying, if you have skills, if you have wisdom, if you have clarity and philosophy, it's not about you just sharing all of this deep revelation that you have. It's if you have it, then it should be demonstrated in good behavior and deeds and humility. Does that make sense? Because a lot of times that, and, I, and I've been guilty of this too, that, that we think it's about gaining knowledge. We think it's about, you know, reading the Bible, getting the next revelation, all of that. And all of that is good. But if it never translates from here into our outward behavior, then, then James is actually questioning the fact if you really even have this knowledge. Because if you do, and it's real to you, and the wisdom is real to you, then it will play out in the way that you treat people, the way that you act, the way that you carry yourself in, in meekness and humility, not in pride. So true wisdom of God is proven by it being played out in our actions. And it does not surprise me that James is writing about this, because James is also... The one that's quoted, and again, remember he's saying this via the Holy Spirit, is that faith without works is dead. And he even goes so far as to say that the spirit, in the same way that the spirit without the body, or the body without the spirit is dead, right? The moment that your spirit leaves your body and goes to heaven, this is dead. And he says in the exact same way that that is a truth, faith without works is also dead. And what is he talking about? He's talking about deeds. He's talking about fruit. So if you really want to know that you're wise in the Lord, then it should play out in your life the way that you treat people, the way that you act, the, in your good deeds. Okay, next verse. However, so this was talking about a godly wisdom. However, if you have bitter jealousy and rivalry accompanied by self-seeking, carnal ambition in your heart, do not boast. You ever notice sometime that stuff creeps into your heart? When you recognize it, keep your mouth shut. That's what it's saying, do not boast. Like, you ever had that thought, like, you're walking, you know, I, I don't know what it is. It might be in a sporting event. It, it may be, uh, you know, something musical. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe at work, you'd be like, that person thinks they're better than me. You don't say it out loud. You're saying it in your heart and in your mind. It says, do not boast. Don't turn around to your coworker and be like, man, you know, I'm so much better at this than Frank over there. He says, do not boast. Now, you need to deal with it in your heart and your mind as well, but it's saying, don't speak those things out there. James is also the one that writes uh, for half of a chapter about how your tongue cannot be tamed and it is a fire and it is set on fire by hell. So many times we just need to zip it, amen, and, and then deal with our heart and our mind. So then once our heart and mind are deal with, then we can open and say the right words. So he says, if you have these things in your heart, do not boast. If you do, meaning if you do boast, you lie by misrepresenting the truth, which is reality, reason, and logic of God. Why? Because that is not the Sophia the skill, wisdom, insight, and clarity and philosophy that comes from above. And it tells you, if you have jealousy and rivalry accompanied by self-seeking carnal ambition, what kind of Sophia this is. So apparently it is a type of wisdom. It is a type of philosophy and sophistication. But he says, but this particular kind of philosophy and sophistication and wisdom is worldly, soulish, and, my, and, and remember, soul is mind, will, and emotions. So this type of Sophia is worldly, soulish, your mind, will, and emotions, and devilish. Some of your translations say demonic. Um, it's, it, the Greek word is devilish. Or you could say satanic. 
isn't it interesting that it, it, it puts the three together? It's saying that the things that are worldly are devilish. The things that are soulish are devilish. If it is not, you know, when we talk about the soul, your soul is the one that's caught in the middle, right? Your soul can either yield to the spirit, which is the, the part of you that's been saved and joined together with Jesus. It's not your mind, will, and emotions that were saved. Anybody knows that is because when you get saved, you weren't automatically um, this walking, walking this perfect life out, amen? So your soul, your mind, will, and emotions always has a decision to make of whether you're going to go and be led by the Spirit or you're going to go and be led by your flesh. And so when you embrace the wisdom, the Sophia of this world, the things of this world are soulish and they're also devilish. Is this making sense? And, and, and this is why I think satanic philosophy is really so subtle, which I said, you know, there are there people that actually like are singing songs of the devil and stuff? Yes, but that is such a fringe. The devil wants us to be involved with ourself and be self-seeking and have our self-interests. And it creeps in ever so subtly. If it's not of God, it's, of the, uh, it's devilish. And so we can see things in this world like psychology and sociology and different things. And people are like, well, that's not really evil. It's, it's just, it's worldly. Well, worldly is devilish. And what is it talking about? It's, it's talking about mixture. When I do counseling appointments, I don't go into any kind of psychology. And if I sense the other person is trying to psychoanalyze themselves, I, call, I say, stop with the psychobabble. And if some of you believe in psychology and you're all offended, I'm sorry. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. When you die and go to heaven, take it up with James. And then you have to take it up with the Holy Spirit because he wrote it. But it's important that we know these things because otherwise the devil, again, isn't coming out going, you know, I'm the devil. He wants to do it subtly so that you can get sucked in and believe it and go, well, this isn't really that bad. Is it really that bad? And he's saying if it's worldly and soulish, it's demonic. It's devilish. And, and, and again, you have to see what, how you got there. Bitter jealousy, rivalry, self-seeking carnal ambition. You know, some of you may have jobs where you have to actually look deep into your heart and going, is your heart more about helping the company or is your heart more about how can I advance? And if it's how can I advance, that is self-seeking and that is self-interest and the Bible will call that devilish. And I'm not getting a lot of amens because many of you are probably trying to do that at your job. So I'm just informing you. If you want to continue to do that, at least you have the information now that it's devilish. Okay? Instead of trusting that if, you're, if it's not about you and you're just, the Bible says that anything that you do, you do it as if you're doing it unto the Lord. If Jesus is your boss... Are you trying to suck up to Jesus in order to get a raise? Or if, if Jesus is your boss and you're in the kingdom, your mission is his mission, you're on the same mission, Jesus is going to realize that and reward you. And again, I know you're like, well, my boss ain't Jesus. It doesn't matter. Do you know that at the time that these books were written, there was slavery going on? Now, it's not the type of slavery that, go, that, that went on, you know, when we read about in our history books. If you could not pay a debt, you literally had to go and live with that person and work down your debt. But they were called a slave. And, and in the Bible, it talks about God addresses masters and he addresses slaves. He says, slaves... Whatever your master tells you to do, do it. Work as you're doing it in the Lord. And it says masters basically don't task your servants. They're there to work off a debt. You know, treat them like you would treat me and then everybody get along. But he didn't say, you know, if, it was, if you were really godly, you wouldn't have that slave in your house anymore. Because that's the kind of stuff that's put out there today. God never said that. And people are like, see, God's for slavery. I'm like, no, God is for paying down debt. Amen which this country doesn't believe in. And they believe in warding, awarding people that cannot get out of debt and continue to rack up debt, more free things. That is devilish. Right? 
Oh, no, that's, you're talking, those, those are political issues. No, 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 no. It's a satanic philosophy. Okay, next verse. Now, we said this, this type of Sophia, this wisdom, this philosophy that is satanic or it's devilish, worldly, soulish, was attached to bitter jealousy and rivalry accompanied by self sinking carnal ambition. So it adds on, once these things are in place with this satanic philosophy, it accompanies other things. Look at this. Where, this is James 3.16, where bitter jealousy and rivalry accompanied by self-seeking carnal ambition exist, which is satanic philosophy, there will be disorder. See any disorder in America these days? There will be disorder. There will be instability. And revolution leading to anarchy. The word disorder, instability, and revolution leading to anarchy are all definitions of that particular Greek word that is most commonly uh, translated disorder. But it also means instability and revolution leading to anarchy. It's unstable. And it includes every form of evil deeds and actions. And you're seeing this today. You're seeing it play out more today than ever because for a long period of time, there was always these satanic philosophies going on, but it's never really reached its climax. And remember, satanic philosophy is just self or self-interest. But now we have a whole world of all kinds of people that just are interested in themselves and they have no awareness. Christy and I talk about this all the time, like... Uh, we went into Tasty Bite the other day. We have our girls with us. And there's, there's these two people that are sitting, I don't know, one booth over. And this lady's like, nah, 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 nah. I'm not just saying all ladies talk like that, but she was. And, and she was loud. And then she starts dropping the F-bomb. And I'm just sitting there. With, but, but again, she doesn't care if there's kids in there. She doesn't care if the people working at the restaurant don't want to hear this stuff. It's all about me. And if I want to say that, then I'm going to say it. That's a satanic philosophy. She has no right to speak that way. She thinks she does, but she doesn't. But because she's not submitted to God, she doesn't know it. And that's what's going on. You see people all the time. Like, it doesn't matter I'm, whether it's at the water park in Yorkville, wherever. It, people will just talk like they're the only ones in the room, and they don't care who hears them. You've got keyboard crusaders on, on social media that just say whatever they want, but it's all about self and self-interest and promoting self. So it says we're bitter Jealousy and rivalry and self-seeking and carnal ambition exist, the satanic philosophy. There will be disorder, instability, and revolution leading to anarchy, including every form of evil deeds and actions. So what I'm saying is today, especially in America, we're getting to the boiling point where this stuff is really starting to boil over. And it's becoming so much about self. It's not just enough that I believe it anymore. It's now you have to believe it. And if you don't believe it, I'm going to either A, cause problems with, for you, or B, I'm going to get some kind of law passed that says you cannot offend me anymore. And if you do, you're going to go to jail. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is a bill currently. I got, I got the, the email the other day about, you know, say no to H whatever numbers after it. In this state... They're trying to pass a bill that says if you as a parent do not affirm your child's preferred gender or identity or whatever they think they are, DCFS can remove them from your home. And people are like, no way. Yes way. That's what I'm talking about when I say there will be Disorder, instability, and revolution. So what's going on? It's, it, well, I'm just going to say it like this. They're after your children. They've been after the children for a while. If we can't kill them in the womb, then we'll confuse them, and then we'll give them all kinds of puberty blockers and hormones, which basically sterilizes them, 
And through this whole process that we're affirming them, they're offing themselves in record numbers. You can look this information up. It's a, it's a satanic philosophy. So you need to do some information and look and, and you know, say no to that bill. But it's, 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 it's right now. It's being taken a look at, and I'm sure we'll be put to a vote. This is sick. So every form of evil deed and actions. Okay, next. So we're going to look at some of these things that have boiled over to evil deeds and, and, and actions. And right now you can already see the list on there. And you're like, oh, this pastor, this is political. Everything you see up here is a satanic philosophy. Thank you for those two amens. Okay, abortion. Violently murdering children in a place that should be the most protective of anywhere is a satanic philosophy. It just is. But because we don't call it violent murder of a baby, we call it a woman's right to choose. We call it, um, this is my favorite one, reproductive rights. Nobody's telling somebody they can't reproduce. It was a joke. It's a satanic philosophy. Any kind of sexual activity outside the confines of marriage between a male and a female is satanic philosophy. Why? Because God said in the beginning, one man with one woman in marriage forever. Now, hear me when I say forever. If you are divorced, getting engaged in the divorce in lust, Jesus says it was for marital infidelity, is a satanic philosophy. Divorce is a satanic philosophy. Now, I'm not saying you're satanic if you've had a divorce. Again, I, always, I can always rail on this because I'm married to a divorced woman. She was previously married. So there is forgiveness, amen? There is, there is repentance and forgiveness. But we, that doesn't mean that we don't call sin, sin. Divorce is a satanic philosophy because it's not a God philosophy. LGBTQIA+, and I'm sure there's even longer, all of that is demonic philosophy. Because it's not of God. And many of them are militant, which is why you're having some of these bills and different things put where people are going to violate your rights because people don't like that you don't think like them. Isn't it amazing that for us as believers, we present the gospel, we present Jesus, we present the loving Savior that died on the cross for you, and if they're like, I don't believe that, we don't go, well, that's fine. We're going to get a law and pass it and make you believe it. Because we know it doesn't matter if they don't believe it in their heart, and even if we could get a law to pass it to make everybody go to church and all of that kind of stuff, that's not going to send everyone to heaven because it's not in their heart. You can pass all the laws all day long. You cannot legislate morality. If you could, then we would say, oh, well, we have a law in this country. You can't kill people. Oh, well, then I guess nobody's going to kill anybody. That's legislative morality. You cannot murder someone. People do it all the time. You cannot legislate morality. DEI. You ever heard of this? Diversity, equity, inclusion. Basically, conducting life on the basis of soulish things, based on your skin color, based on who you're going to bed with at night, based on your certain views, based on if you're trans. What it basically is, is, again, everything that is about it is soulish. It's basically affirmative action 2.0 saying it has nothing to do, and, and here's the thing, do you know that some of this is being considered for um, commercial airline pilots? Are you excited to get on a plane anytime soon? We picked this uh, woman trans person, not because they're the best pilot, but because you know, we had to meet the DEI standards. You gonna get on that plane? I'm not saying women can't fly, like women can't drive, but. Come on. Just make it sure you were awake. Women, put down the stones. No, I, it has nothing to do with that. I'm just talking about a less qualified person. Not going well because, you know, we, we, their skin color or they're male or female or, you know, whatever, they're, they're intersectional and all of that kind of stuff. If you don't know this language that I'm using, this is really being implemented. Okay, next one, Black Lives Matter, Inc. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm always do a big deal about putting ink on there. Okay, I'm talking about 
the corporation of Black Lives Matter. That is a satanic philosophy. Because if you look on their webpage, they're, they're open, openly Marxist. And Marxism is evil. If you don't know what Marxism is, go look it up. Learn who Karl Marx was. But I'm talking about the organization. And African-American people should be ticked at this group because these people got filthy rich off of this. Okay, now let's bring it down to things that somebody might not consider so political. Lying, cheating, cursing, hatefulness, unkindness, envy, strife. If you have strife with someone, that's a satanic philosophy. If you're envious of someone, that's a satanic philosophy. Lying is a satanic philosophy. You can tell that pretty much it, most people in the news media and our own government itself is all in the lying business. That is a satanic philosophy. Why? Because truth is who Jesus is. And a lie is all about the devil. Okay, last thing on this page. Anything and everything not of God's definition of love. So when people are like, love is love, or love is this, or love is this. If it's not the definition that is listed in 1 Corinthians 13, and anything that Jesus himself said about love, it is a satanic philosophy. You can't just put the word love on it and assume that it's Jesus. It has to be God's kind of love. It has to be a biblical type of love. All right, we got a whole other page. Go to the next one. Okay, some of these should be duh. Sex trafficking is a satanic philosophy. Using substances to alter your state of mind is a satanic philosophy. I, I, maybe some of you didn't think this was going to make the, the list. Illegal immigration is a satanic philosophy. Why? Because it's illegal. I think we heard that. We were like, oh, you know, the migrant crisis at the border. No, 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 no. It's illegal immigration. You are breaking the law. The Bible specifically talks about that you submit to your rulers and the laws of the country unless it comes into conflict with what God says. And again, despite what you may think that you see on TV, I'm not saying that women and children aren't coming too, but the vast majority of people that are coming across the border are fighting age males. And they're not just Hispanic. There's all kinds of them. There's Chinese people coming, all of this kind of stuff. There's probably terror cells being put all over the place in our country. Well, you're being kind of political. No, I'm talking about the satanic agenda that is being put into this country. It's a satanic philosophy. I'm not telling you this, though, when you go to the voting booth. I mean, but you should understand that. And again, please, if you're seeing that, you're like, well, you're just picking all the, the lefty liberal things. There are tons of satanic philosophies on the right as well. There's just less of them. Lawlessness in general. The Bible talks about in the last days that because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So any type and form of lawlessness in general is a satanic philosophy. Climate change leading to this some kind of end of the world nonsense is satanic philosophy. Well, how do you know that? Because the Bible clearly says in Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, that God himself, when he returns, in the same way it says that he flooded the old earth, cataclysmic event, right? The flood, Noah. It says in the same way in this earth, all of the elements will be melted with fervent heat. This world will eventually be destroyed by God himself, not climate change. And I made sure to put that climate change leading to the end of the world because, yes, I believe in climate change every day. It gets cold. It gets hot. Sometimes it rains. Sometimes the wind blows a little harder. Right? But, but this, this satanic philosophy put forward, and make, make no mistake, it's to control your lives. Because we'll put it, well, the end of the world is coming, so we've got to put this in place and this place, and you can't do this, and you have to buy this kind of car, and you have to do this, and we have to cut back carbon emissions. That is all nonsense. Because if we could bring about the end of the world, then there is no way that Peter could have said that in 2 Peter chapter 3. We are not going to bring about the end of the world. God is going to bring about the end of the world at the returning of Christ. 
Okay, chemically castrating children. I, I should not have to explain that that's a satanic philosophy, but there's lots of people doing it to their own children. It's a satanic philosophy. The whole trans thing, it's all demonic. How many of you know that sin is a satanic philosophy? Anything and everything motivated by, motivated by self is a satanic philosophy. Anything and everything that isn't God's philosophy is automatically a satanic philosophy. I, again, I give you a list because sometimes we go over things and going, well, when he says satanic philosophy, what are some real examples that we have in the world? All of those are in your notes if you have the app so you can look back at them. Again, and maybe, you know, I'm not... I'm not trying to offend people, but maybe some of the things on this list, you didn't know that. And maybe I will give you the opportunity when I stand over here at the end of the service, you can come up and tell me how I'm wrong about that. But I would like you to show me in the Bible. Because the Bible is the standard that we have. God's philosophy is the standard that we have. What Jesus said and did is the standard that we have. And anything outside of that is instability. It's false. Okay, let's go on. All right, we're finishing up James here. James 3, starting at verse 17. Okay. We just spent all this time talking about the Sophia, the wisdom, the philosophy, the sophistication of the world, the soul, and devilish. That was talking about the wisdom of this world. Now we're going to talk about the wisdom of God. So he says, however, the Sophia... The skill, wisdom, insight, clarity, and philosophy from above is indeed pure. It's pure. It can also be translated holy, unblemished. It's peaceful. It's fair. It's reasonable. And I love this one. It's ready to obey. We need to be in a state of readiness all the time, ready to obey when the Lord speaks. We already have his general will in the scriptures, but there's many times he's going to have a specific will for your life and he's going to speak it to you and you need to be able to hear and obey and respond. It is full of mercy. The Sophia from above. It is full of mercy, compassion, and good fruit. Good fruit there by definition is outward deeds reflecting inward faith. And remember, we talked about that in a previous verse. If you say you have all this wisdom and all of that, but you don't have good deeds, you don't have any of that, then your wisdom is, is useless. So it says, outward deeds reflecting inward faith. It is unwavering, sincere, and without hypocrisy. The seed which holds the fruit of righteousness is scattered in peace of mind, rest, health, and wholeness. That's the word peace or shalom. So it's scattered in peace of mind, which means rest, health, and wholeness by those who make peace of mind, rest, health, and wholeness. So do you see that the second one is, has nothing to do with me? It has nothing to do with my interest. It has nothing to do with promoting myself. Because the Bible says, deny your self Take up your cross and follow me. So, again, all demonic philosophy in this world all has to do with self. It emanates from self or my self-interest, my ambition, my jealousy, my, I, I wanna, I, my rivalry with other people. I need to, I need to you know, how, how many of you have been in conversations with people where people are talking bad about somebody else? All that is is a demonic philosophy to put somebody else down, even though they're not even there, to lift yourself up. That's self lifting up. That's a demonic philosophy. That's why gossip is a demonic philosophy. So again, as far as if you're like, well, what's the simplest way to make sure that I'm living a godly philosophy? Well, we have the Sophia of God right here. But again, in a word, it would be denial of self. If satanic philosophy is about self, then that means a godly philosophy would be the opposite of self. Jesus didn't come to the world to die because he thought it would be pretty cool. He came to the world to die an excruciating death to lift you up, to lift me up, to erase sin off of us so that we could be with him in heaven. There is nothing that Jesus did in this world that was about him. But the devil tried to get him to do it, right? If you are the son of God, 
help yourself. You know, you're hungry. Make some bread. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. The angels will catch you. And basically, when everybody sees you levitating, they'll all bow before you. So again, Satan is trying to inject his philosophy of self and self-interest into Jesus. He showed them, he showed him all of the governments of the world in a moment. And he said, all of this is yours if you bow down to me. And it wasn't just simply about Jesus bowing down. He's trying to appeal to Jesus' self-interest. Oh, Jesus, you could make peace right now. You just bow to me, I'll give you all of this, and then you can, you can make peace right here on earth. But you know what? Jesus knew that that might be something in his self-interest because he doesn't have to die. He doesn't have to be rejected by people, none of that. But that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't God's philosophy. So he knew if he gave in to that, even though Satan is appealing to his self, that that is not God's philosophy. That was not God's will. That was not God's plan. And he had an even better plan of redemption that was going to happen so that one day we will all be together with him. Amen.